Welcome to Workshop Wednesday, where we take you into our workshop once a week. I'm Steph. And I'm Vicki. And we asked you guys on Monday what project you want us to follow up on, something that we've, a project we made in the past. And we had a lot of responses. There was one that won out, but just barely. Just barely. Just barely. It's true. So yes. there was two more that you guys also were interested mm -hmm. in. So over the next couple weeks, we're going to show you all three of them. So today, though, we're going to show you the winner a little bit later in the show. But and first, a fast DIY. I'm going to show you how I made these cute fall decor pumpkins using a marbling paint technique. With any paint pouring or mar marbling project, you're going to need a medium that simply thins your paint so it's able to pour. And with this one, you're using a one-to-one -one ratio, and that's pretty much for like all of them. You're going to just pour in on it. I just eyeballed it, half paint, half paint pouring medium, and you stir it. And don't stir too much because you don't want a lot of air bubbles because those will show up in your finished product. So I'm actually just using three colors here and using the medium first and putting in the the paint and any kind of craft paint is going to work. These are a specific brand, but I've used it with several other different kinds and they work quite well. I'm adding a little bit of gold paint. The gold paint, I did not use the marbling medium because it's thin enough. This is a wood round and I spray painted it first. You could also just use the acrylic paint, same paint that you're using. And I did that so the paint would move easily along the wood. Uh, I've tried it without doing the painting and the paint doesn't quite move as smoothly and I think that's a step you shouldn't skip. And you just put it in the pattern you want. Um, again, this is open for experimentation. You can do whatever you want. And you just simply tilt it up and around and you want it to get ideally all the way to the edge and even over the edge. It doesn't quite get to the edges so I mixed up a little bit more paint again with the half paint, half medium and I just poured that along the edge. And then I use a paintbrush to kind of finesse it. Lastly, I use um, a silicone spray and that helps create those little circles, what they call cells, and just gives it a really fun look to the project. And now we're heading to Steph's house for a $200 tip. And I don't know if you remember our first $200 tip. It's basically when you call in a professional to look at a problem that you have, and then they tell you what the problem is. And it's really something you could have, with a little bit of research, you could have DIY'd it yourself. So let's head to Steph's house. For today's $200 tip, I'm here in my guest bathroom, and a couple weeks ago, I noticed that there was some water pooling around the bottom of my toilet, and I was like, oh no, what do I do? So anytime there's water involved, I seem to just kind of like forget all reasoning and just go to like, water, bad, fix now. <laughs> so mom looked at it and she was like, oh, I wonder if the bottom seal of your toilet is is leaking maybe that's where the water's coming from because we couldn't really identify where the water's coming from and so I'm thinking oh my goodness I've never done that I don't know how to do that do I need a new toilet da, 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 da. so instead of trying to kind of investigate it myself I called a plumber they looked at it the first thing they said is nope it's not the seal under the toilet because the toilet would be loose and so that was good to know it wasn't loose so it definitely wasn't that and he looked and he's like, well, it's really just this pipe cable. I'm not sure what they call it, uh, but it's uh, that's what's leaking. You could see there was water on it, but it was hard to identify that was where it was coming from. So he replaced that and it fixed it. <laughs> so it was about a little over $100 to, uh, to do that. He was here for a couple minutes and you replace that. My advice is if you're having an issue, turn off the water. If you're having a lot of water, that's easy to do. You turn it off right here at the toilet. But do a little investigating. There are pieces and parts that you can replace very easily in a toilet, and I've done that before, but it just, I don't know, I just kind of was like, I gotta get this fixed. So just do a little investigating um, before you call in that plumber. Plumbers are great and can do good work, but something as simple as that, I could have had done for like $4 and called it a day. But it was a, it was a lesson I wanted to share with you guys, so hopefully you don't uh, run into that situation. And now we're doing a project follow-up. On Monday, you all responded to our question, this one, but just by a hair, and it's a sliding barn door, and that happens to be at my house, so we're gonna take a look and show you how it's holding up. So, come on, let's go. And here it is. This is the barn door that we installed about two years ago here at mom's house. We installed it in front of her laundry room because she had an, the old door that she had there actually came into the laundry room, so it took up space in her already small laundry room. Um, so she's been pretty, ha I'm happy I'm with very it. happy with it. <laughs> I don't live here, but um, I'm going to let her talk a little bit more about it, give you a little bit more details because she's lived with it for two years. That's right, mm -hmm. yes. And actually, I love to show this to people when they come over. People think of barn doors as more rustic looking, but it it is a 
what people would think of as a barn door, but it doesn't have that barn door look. This is actually a whiteboard. It slides very, still slides very easily. I love all the open space it gives to the laundry room. It's just been, that's probably been my favorite thing is this opening is so wide and so easy to, to get in and out. Slides wonderfully. You'll probably, you'll notice up here is a, an extra board and that's called a header board. And we had to put that up there because we couldn't hit the studs in order to, to put that hardware up. More than likely, if you're gonna do that, you're gonna probably need to put in a header board. If you're building a house from scratch, you can go ahead and put one of those in and then you can just screw right into the top of that. But it rolls very nicely still. One of the things I was concerned about was down here, there's a little um, guide that keeps the door on the track and keeps it from swinging out or in. I was a little concerned about this because we didn't screw it into the tile, we just, we just epoxied it. And there's been absolutely no problem with that. It continues to stay right on the guide very easily. You'll notice it's a little chipping up in the corner, top corner and the bottom corner. And that's actually original to the build. We chipped that when we were installing it. There's been no additional chipping since then, so I was very pleased to see that there was no more damage to the whiteboard. It's a great addition to the house. Um, if you have a small place in your house that could benefit, it's, it's worth doing. And because it went so well, we actually have been talking about doing one on her guest bathroom yes. uh, in the future. So if that's something you're interested in seeing us do another one of these, let us know in the comments below. And yay, mm -hmm. let's do that. <laughs> Mom, Mom's ready for I'm it. Don't ready, even let I'm us ready. know. Yes. She's ready for yes. it. And now we're going to share a project from you. This is from our follower, Alex, from South Florida, and he has a great upcycle project that Steph's going to tell you about. <laughs> so in his garage, he had some old CD racks. He basically spray painted it and then put a, a clear coat on it. And then he took peel and stick tiles, stuck them to each other, and he made little shelves. He put them into the CD rack, and then he put his kids' shoes on them, which makes a perfect shoe rack. And then when he doesn't need it as a shoe rack, he also said he might take out every other shelf and make it an herb garden or um, just extra storage for the bathroom because who doesn't need extra storage? So what a cool idea. Thank you, Alex, for sharing that with us. And if you have a project you want to share with us, you can. we have a link below called hashtag try, learn, share that you can share your project with us too. Now, if you want to get a newsletter from us, you can uh, go down below. There's a link and you can sign up and we send that once a week and you'll get that on a Thursday. Yes. We do want to thank um, a viewer on YouTube. Um, last week's show, she gave us a great comment. She said, I like the new workshop Wednesday. I have a few huge bulbs that I have set up through my Amazon Alexa system. Mom is right. It's so easy now to just be sitting in a chair or walk into a room and say, Alexa, bedroom light on. <laughs> so thank you for sharing that with us. We'd love to uh, see those messages and mom, sure. Yes. I sure like, likes yes. to be. Uh, I do like to be right. <laughs> yeah, exactly. So we will put post another question on Monday to um, help us to determine what we're going to do on workshop Wednesdays. And we thank you for your participation and we will see you next week yes and happy halloween yes. Boo. oh gosh that, that was, was unnecessary. unnecessary yes it was unnecessary <laughs> okay thank bye. you again. bye